So I want to thank Ms. Kaiser. I think that was an amazing talk. I want to talk today about a different type of social capital. So let's hopefully get into the next slide. All right. So when we graduate UTS, a lot of us can imagine ourselves sitting in a classroom like this. We're listening to professors for the next four years of our life, sitting in these lecture halls with students dotting the room. While this sage on the stage model of education hasn't changed for decades, the social conditions surrounding it have. Student debt, degree inflation, and an ever-changing industry are making university education less affordable, less profitable, and yet more necessary than ever. How can we revolutionize education for the 21st century? Well, in 2011, a, Stan a professor at Stanford, Sebastian Thrun, uploaded um, a MOOC on the introduction, uh, introduction to artificial intelligence, and he pioneered a new model of education. He didn't expect um, 150,000 people from 190 countries to sign up for his course. It was the first of which was made public to all the digital audience. The sheer volume and diversity of the students quickly caught the attention of the technology and education world. They knew they are onto something big. Today, I want to talk about how MOOCs are presenting a radically new approach to more engaging and more accessible education. So, within months of Thron's first MOOC, three main MOOC platforms emerged. Udacity, Coursera, and edX all of which now provide hundreds of courses from topics that range from programming to film, music to, um, to illustrations. And so what we have here are MOOCs that are being taught by world-class professors and are accessible to anybody with an internet connection. Seeing this, I took advantage of this last summer to take my first MOOC, The Challenges of Global Poverty. So there's really three things that make up the foundation of the MOOC. First is the lecture. Second, quizzes, and third, peer-to-peer -peer interaction. Every 10 minutes of my lectures on hunger, a test would quiz me to check how well I understood the material and give me instant feedback on my, uh, on my progress. But if I didn't understand the material, I wasn't left in the dust. I had the support of a community. What I had was an interactive community of engaged learners who are seeking uh, to help each other. I found that MOOCs provided three main sources of interactivity. One is through um, the flipped classroom. Sorry. Uh, the first one is through um, forms. The second one is through the webcam. And the third is through the classroom. So first, I want to talk about the forms. So what happened was I went onto the forms to look for comments. I didn't know the answers to my questions on nutrition-based poverty traps. I saw a comment on uh, the forums, however, from a Nigerian student who's talking about how price hikes and oil shortages were affecting his local economy and the hunger situation there. I realized that what I was doing was crowdsourcing my answers from a global community of committed learners. I was creating discourse with people who also thought the issues we were learning about mattered. And I thought that was powerful. Now, the second form of interaction is really um, the webcam. In my behavioral economics course at Coursera, my instructor, Dan Ariely, has been reintroducing face-to-face -face learning by reaching out to students through Google Hangouts Live. He's been hosting weekly discussions on things like courseware, things like peer learning, and heated debates on dishonesty. For me, it felt like we were talking in real life in office hours, even though uh, we were talking through the webcam, because the barriers of location and distance were broken. But the third form of interaction really gets physical. Around the world, learning hubs are being launched by Coursera in order to bring together nearby students and teacher facilitators into one classroom. What we're creating here is an offline ecosystem of discourse where students are making lasting, meaningful um, connections with people who also care about the same courses that they do. So now I want to really talk about the big question here. What role is, are MOOCs going to play in the future of education? 
what role are MOOCs going to play in the education of you, the students? Well, I think there's going to target really three main areas. We're going to be looking at high schools, universities, and we're going to be looking at the job market. High schools are starting to implement what's called the flipped classroom. To put it simply, this is where students are learning uh, from at home, online from lectures, and coming to school to do more active learning. Now, this empowers both the students and the teachers. Students can learn at their own pace. They can rewatch videos where they don't understand the content to make sure they don't go into classes with huge gap gaps of knowledge. S teachers, on the other hand, have the ability to stalk students. And I mean this in the best possible way. Teachers have the ability to collect data on where students are struggling. They can see where students are retaking tests, where they're rewatching um, your videos to see where they're struggling so that during class they can provide targeted help to those individuals. What we're seeing here is that flipped classrooms are making classes more engaging and more educating for students of all skill levels. Now, Sorry, this Prezi is uh, a bit outdated, but um, what's happening is with universities are just dipping their toes into MOOCs. We're having MOOCs create partnerships with universities to integrate their courses into the course curriculum. We have universities now where you could earn a computer science degree completely by taking MOOCs. And might I say, this is by doing it at a much more affordable price. What we're seeing here is that people who normally wouldn't be able to afford a university education are being able to, empowered to do so. And what could this look like for the future? Well, we could see tertiary education develop much faster in developing countries because MOOCs are paving the way uh, to reduce the costs of creating curriculum, of funding uh, professors because essentially what they are are virtual textbooks that can be accessible and integrated by anybody. I think that this can revolutionize development by creating an educated middle class much faster and really revolutionize how, revolutionize how our economy works. But the benefits don't stop there. I think MOOCs are going to be the new standard for higher education and continuing education. We live in a society now where industries are falling and rising frequently. The worker of tomorrow needs to be able to know how to learn and to relearn. Having a certificate of completion like this one is going to be a competitive advantage where interdisciplinary students are required. We're going to see MOOCs satisfy the demand for professionals who are both digitally and business literate by allowing professionals to extend their major, uh, extend their area of expertise beyond their major and watch courses and get certificates of completion and their own flexible schedule. Really, I think MOOCs are opening up new learning opportunities for students all the way from high school to the postgraduate level. So, whether we decide to take MOOCs today or watch them from our Google Glasses tomorrow, one thing is for certain. Massive open online courses are going to change the way our society educates itself. So why not get started early on that MOOC you've always wanted to learn? Thank you.